Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be giving you all a story time because every time I tell this story to new friends, they are always fascinated by it. And I have never told this story on camera before. So I wanted to do something different on my channel once again and give you guys a story time on how I got my very first horse at 12 years old without my family's approval or consent or even knowledge that I was getting this horse. I wanted to tell this story because I think when you really want something, nothing can really stop you. So at 12 years old, not only did I get my first horse that I thought would be impossible to do, I ended up getting two horses for one and brought them home without my family knowing that that was going on at all. And here is how that happened. So one day at about 12 years old, I was on the school bus going back home and all of a sudden I see this horse being ridden in the middle of the road, which is very common in Brazil. People ride their horses like that. But what really got my attention is that not only was someone riding this horse in the middle of traffic on a very busy day, there was also a baby following the mother horse. So there was this beautiful brown with white spots horse, and baby horse, and I was blown away. And I started creating all these fantasies in my head because I always loved animals, you know, so I always loved horses and goats and dogs and cats, all kinds of animals. So, so that was already a normal thing for me. But when I saw that baby horse, I started creating all these ideas in my head of me having this beautiful relationship with a horse and I was going to have this best friend that was going to be a horse. And I don't know, it just started creating all these ideas in my head like I wanted a horse. And I kept looking back to, you know, to see what this horse was throughout the rest of the ride home, which maybe it could have been at like, it could have been maybe like 10 miles from my house. And throughout those 10 miles, I kept thinking of like, I want to go back and find this horse. I want to get to know this horse. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, I got dropped off at home and I dropped off my backpack and I walked all the way back to that area where I had seen the horse being ridden. This was in the middle of the road. So I had no idea of where this horse actually lived. So I was just trying to locate it and I had no plan. I'm 12 years old. All I have is instinct driving me to where I saw that horse to try to find it because I don't even know what I wanted. I wanted to get to know the horse and the owner and I wanted to spend time with the horse. And I guess, you know, again, it was a very natural thing for me because I always loved spending time with animals. So that was the first intention right there. So I go and I walk all the way there. It takes me hours of trying to find, you know, the area where I had seen this horse being ridden a little earlier that day. So after hours of searching, looking in literally every backyard, looking every corner, looking around to see if I could see any signs of this horse, I spot the mom horse and the baby in this backyard. And I just stand there outside of the fence for probably another hour, just waiting to see if the owners show up so I can talk to them about the horse. And I guess looking back now, I have always been a kid that was very determined and very, um, like, I guess I didn't have a lot of common sense with uh, what is possible and what is not possible. I just always threw myself towards things that I wanted because in that time, I thought about buying this horse. At 12 years old, to give you guys a little bit of backstory here, uh, my family had a farm that my, my grandparents bought and I lived with them there. But at this time, we're living in the city. So we had already moved away from the farm for probably two years at this point. So we just have a regular backyard in a neighborhood. So, you know, this was not like a normal thing for me to go and just bring animals home uh, besides dogs. I did do that with dogs. Um, but anyway, so I'm just thinking I want to talk to the owner and I want to see if I can buy this horse. I guess I had gone to like pet stores and bought like a parakeet or, you know, like a bunny, something like that with my family's approval of it, but never anything like a horse. But in the time I was not thinking about it. I was just like, I want this horse. I want this baby horse. So I put in my head that I would buy the baby horse. So after about an hour of waiting, outside um, the owner shows up and I just start to ask him and he's not taking me serious like I'm just like you know how much is the baby horse and he's like I think at the time he said maybe 300 350 
which I'm 12 years old, so I don't even have 20, so let alone, you know, 350. And I just started to talk to him and tell him that, like, you know, I want to buy it and um, I just need a little bit of time to put the money together. He, you know, is willing to sell me the horse and the baby horse wasn't ready to go yet. So I guess maybe that's why he wasn't like, um, I guess he wasn't really thinking about it because it didn't really matter to him, you know, even if I didn't buy it, it's not like he is missing out on a sale because he's not ready to sell her yet. So I don't know. I just know he said, yes, I can buy the horse if I come up with the money. So in that moment, a big, I had this whole rush to my body, you know, like when you really feel like excited about something like, wow, I can actually have this horse. This, this thing can actually be mine. But here's the catch. I could not tell my family about it. I know they would never allow me to do it. Um, we lived in a regular neighborhood with a small yard and there was no space for a horse. And I didn't know what to think about it, but I still knew I wanted this horse. I went home and I started to think of every way possible that I could get the 350 to get the horse. And here's some of the things that I did. So I started asking, I know my great grandparents were still around at the time and my parents and my aunts. And so I would ask them for money for ice cream and I wouldn't buy ice cream, I would save that. I would, I started selling soda cans, you know, in Brazil, it's like, I think five cents per can and I would collect all the cans that I could to sell. I stopped eating lunch at school. So all the lunch money that they would give me to buy lunch, I would actually save that to go towards buying the horse. And I have always been a very impatient person. Even back then, like I didn't wanna just wait for months to put this money together to get the horse. So I was doing everything that I could to get the money together as fast as possible. I would say even a week into it, I was already getting a lot of anxiety. Like I wasn't getting close enough to putting the money together. So I started panicking. I started thinking of different ways that I can save money to get the horse without telling anyone. So none of my family had any idea that every day, by the way, every day after school, I would go towards where the horse was and I would spend hours and hours and hours and hours hanging out with the horses, giving them treats, walking them, getting familiar with, you know, everything that they liked and they didn't like and and, and their personalities and just how to take care of a horse. I had never had a horse before. This horse was a working horse, uh, like a cart horse that uh, the owner would use as his main source of income. So he basically would like take away demolition. Uh, if someone like took down a house, you know, he would take all of that debris out using the horse carrier to throw it away. And this horse would work every single day. It was a very, um, she was never got to be a horse. She's never got to, to have pasture. She lived in the city in a backyard. They would set her free to go eat and fend for herself. And then, you know, in the morning they had to go with a motorcycle, grab her, bring her home, and then they would hook her up. The baby would stay home by herself and then they would go to work. And the day that I had found them with the baby being loose, loose following the mom is because it was in the time where they were picking her up to go to work. I basically saved this horse from that life of constantly having to pull, you know, thousands of pounds of debris and demolition material on a daily basis. And she didn't trust anyone really riding her. Even when the owner was riding her, she was never happy. She was always like fighting it, um, but she was mostly used to pull carts. And so that was her life before I, found her. So I kept doing that for a while and now we're about two weeks in and I have been saving every day's lunch money. I have been selling soda cans and I just feel like I'm not getting close enough to putting the money together. So my mind is actually work like crazy. I keep thinking of ways. How can I put money together? Like what can I do right now to put this money together without telling my family what it's for? And I went as far as pretending to be homeless because I saw that kids would beg for money and they would get a little dollar here and there. So I started pretending to be homeless with the other kids to get money to go towards this horse. So at this point, I am you know, selling soda cans, saving the lunch money, 
begging for money on the streets, pretending to be homeless. And, and again, I'm 12 years old, right? I'm like not thinking this straight. All I'm, I'm convinced that I will have this horse. I mean, that, I saw no barriers. I saw no, how are we gonna keep this horse in the backyard? How am I going to explain to my family that I have a horse? How am I going to, you know, actually do this? So I did this for about 30 days. And again, I'm going to see the horse every single day. I, the, I'm becoming friends with the owner's kids. 30 days go by and I still don't have the money together. Maybe I'm like only halfway there. And at this point, the guy starts to tell me, you know, the horse is now getting old enough that they will be selling her. And if I don't have the money, I might not be able to get the horse and I would have to wait until this horse have a whole nother baby before, you know, I can try again. And I started to panic. I started to really like look at every way possible. And he started asking me questions. At this point, he started to ask me, you know, what do you have that you can trade? And this was the first time in my life that I knew that trading something for another was a possibility. And I started to think like, oh, what do I have? You know, I have video games, I had different like electronics that my family had given me uh, as a way to try to get me to be interested in other things, ironically, because, you know, I was always bringing puppies home and cats and a chicken. And so um, I wanted to have, you know, birds and, rabbits as pets and so my family had given me different video games and cameras and things like that to try to get my focus to go onto something else so as we're talking about it I you know tell him I have a PlayStation and he's like well what else do you have and I remember that my aunts had given me two cameras and I had no idea how much they they were worth you know I had no idea I brought up the fact that I had the two cameras. He said, bring them over and let, let, let me look at it and we'll go from there. So I bring these two cameras that my aunt had given me. This is when this story took a very interesting turn. So as I have the two cameras in front of him and he's looking at them, this guy literally says to me, hey, I'm gonna make a deal with you. You give me both cameras and just take the mom and the baby. In this moment, do you know when you just know you're biting more than you want, than what you can chew. That's the definition of that moment right there. I was just like, oh my God. I had never thought about it. I had never fantasized having two horses. I have never, it, it never even crossed my mind. So when this guy said that, of course I say with no hesitation, I'll take both. <laughs> no, literally though, but that's how it happened. I literally did not think of the consequences. I did not think of the logistics. I just said, okay. So now I'm literally walking home with a, a full grown horse and the baby. And I walk all the way back home telling all my friends, this is my horse, I'm all proud. This is my horse. They're like, oh my God, how did, did, where did you buy it? Where did this horse come from? You know, and I'm just super excited. I'm just like so proud of myself. I'm just so like excited. And I'm walking home with this horse. I put it in the backyard and I, am, I remember we had a mango tree in my backyard and you know there's mangoes on the ground and the horse is eating mangoes and I'm like giving, cutting grass outside and bringing it the, in the yard for her and maybe two hours go by, we're all settled in and then my grandparents arrive home in a very big rush for an appointment that I'm supposed to go with them apparently and I remember that day like it was yesterday. They are arriving rush into the house, you know, they don't even notice that the horse is in the backyard. They're just like, come on, why are you not ready yet? We gotta go, what are you doing? We need to go, we're, gonna, we're running late for this appointment. And I'm like literally shaking at this point because my family, like, they're very loud. Like, they're very, like, um, strict and very firm with things and intense, you know, when they have, like, serious conversations with you. So I'm, like, literally shaking and I'm like, and then they, they and then I'm like, Oh, I don't, I don't want to go, blah, blah, blah. Like, do I really need to go? And then they spot the horse in the backyard. And they literally, I remember the shock. They're like, what is this horse doing here? Wh whose horse is this? And they're saying in such a, like, uh, you know, s like strongly convinced that this horse is not even mine. It's just like 
they have no idea what this was in the yard. So why, so how can I tell them that this is my horse and, exp I, and that I traded two cameras that they gave me that I didn't have permission to do that, you know, because that's kind of like, I don't know, I feel like if you give your 12 year old, you know, a big, a car or something, you don't want them just like getting rid of it, you know, without asking you first. So that's kind of like how I felt. Um, so I'm like, literally, I remember, super scared. And I gagged and I tell them, it's my horse. They think I'm joking. So they're like, we don't have time for this. Get the owner here right now. Get the horse out of here. We gotta go. They're looking at each other like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do with this? Like, you know, and I'm just there. There's nothing else. So at this point, I know that there's no backing out of it because it was a final transaction. The horse is mine and I have to deal with it now. So I tell them the horse is mine. They freak out. They are looking at each other. They are talking. They're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Like, what do we actually do? They have a heart. So I knew they wouldn't just throw this horse on the streets. And I basically told them someone was walking by and they were selling the horse and I traded and I didn't think about it. And I just left it at that. So now we have to figure it out, right? Because there is no place for the horse to go. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where the owner lives. I lied. I was just like, someone was walking by. I have no contact with them. So I'm stuck with the horse. And now we put them in this position that like, what do we do? So right there in that same day, they talked about it. My grandfather has always been someone that um, tried to do everything for me and be there for me because I had a lot of problems like with my parents not being together and I was the first child and the first you know grandchild so I remember him like not even taking it as, as serious my grandmother was definitely the one that was like freaking out because she is like more of the um, logistics you know kind of person and she's always been like the one trying to be responsible and take care of everything and keep everything in order um, but my grandfather was always more the one that was like, you know, if we can do it, let's do it. And they talked about it. And then that same day, we decided to move back to the farm that we had, that we had moved out of for two years and we had no plans of going back. And now the last minute, we're packing up everything. And within three days, we are getting on the road and we're moving back to the farm, which is basically where I spent the rest of my childhood from 12 until I turned 18, which I then moved to the US on my 18th birthday. So from the you know 12 year old mark to the 18th, I was on this ranch with not only the horse, because then after this horse, I really got to live the life that I wanted um, back then because I got cows and goats and more horses. And I had like nine horses. Um, by the time that I was 18 and all the cows and goats and chickens and all kinds of dogs and uh, a whole ranch full of animals, which we can dive into another story another day where, you know, I left all that behind and came here to the US. So now we're getting towards the end of the story. And basically when we got onto the property that she was going to live on, uh, I remember as if it was yesterday, she had never seen fresh grass like that in her life before. Uh, on the ranch, we had all kinds of different types of grass and very rich, you know, green grass. We had ponds that she could swim in. We had rivers with fresh water that ran through the property. So this horse literally went from a horrible life to paradise. And I remember just her demeanor and her... Um, the way she would look at things and the way she would breathe was different once we got to this property. It was like she had never seen that before. And it was a beautiful life after that. Uh, she became my best friend. I would ride her to school sometimes. She was the fastest horse. Uh, she did not care for other people riding her. Uh, she formed a bond with me. She was definitely not a horse that just anyone could ride. But we had like the perfect relationship. So. I would ride her every day and it was a lot of fun and we had a very strong bond and I had her for many years before I moved to the US. Um, which again, there's so much that I can tell you guys, so many different crazy stories. But this is the story on how I got my very first horse without my family's permission, without letting them know. And even when, all, you know, in reality, most people would think that 
it would be impossible and they would never even try. I did the most and took my chances and took a risk and got the horse that I wanted. And that really actually opened the doors for me to live a childhood life that I really wanted because I wanted to live on the farm, but my grandparents you know, had chosen at that time to be in the city, to be closer to things uh, and not be so isolated. But I really wanted to go back and this was my way to go back without even thinking that far. But you know, I got to have all of that, all because I believed that I could essentially. And I tried every day different ways and never, and I never thought that it was impossible. I just thought of how can I do it? And yeah, I feel like if you really want something and you put your mind to it and you really, really, really work for it, you will get it.